one of the things that we wanted to do was is try to have our student uh, representatives lead this discussion because they are currently you know in college and you know they are surviving college as we speak <laughs> now most of us are between you know that you know freshman and uh, sophomore year right now so you are learning as you go what works and what doesn't so th today each person each representative will discuss a different topic and kind of lay out what's been working for them so i will go ahead and pass this over to our student representative and they'll lead the discussion hi guys thanks for coming today my name is stacy and i'm going to start us off by talking about stress and stress management do you guys have a problem with stress at all with your college experience do you ever get stressed <laughs> cool. Some people don't, and I'm so jealous of people who aren't stressed, but I, I do have a problem with stress. Um, stress is a normal part of life, it's a normal part of the college experience, and without stress, things would never get done. It only becomes a negative issue in our life if it's excessive or out of control. And it's important for you to become aware of your reaction to the stresses in your life. And you do that by identifying the triggers. Um, what is the source of your stress? Are you stressed by external things, the things that happen around you, or are you stressed by things internally, your thoughts and reactions to the things around you? Both external and internal stressors have a part of it that you are in control of and a part of it that you are not in control of, and you need to learn the difference between those as well. Um, and if it's out of your control, let it go. An example of that is if other people are causing stress in your life, you cannot control other people, um, especially if you're driving in traffic on your way to school and the person in front of you is going too slow, you can't do anything to control that. All you can do is be responsible for your reaction to that stressful moment. If it is in your control, then do something about it. Take action. Um, an example of this from my personal life is my cell phone. If I'm trying to do my homework, my phone is going off constantly. I've just learned to separate myself from that external stressor because I can. I put it in a completely different room than I'm in. And sometimes you are able to completely separate yourself from a source of stress like that. Um, and I'm sure you all have heard of the fight or flight response, but think of it with a bit of a different twist. The next time you feel stressed, ask yourself, is there anything that I can do about this? Is there any part of this that's within my control? If there is, think, fight. I'm going to stand the ground, I'm going to take action and fight this stress. If it is not within your control, then think flight and just imagine it flying away. Um, letting it go. What ifs? College um, is full of the unknown and lots of what ifs. That causes anxiety, worry, fear, self-doubt, and uncertainty. Um, and all of that can cause you sometimes to feel like you just have a lack of purpose for even being in school. And if you are facing those fears or doubts that you don't have what it takes to make the grades or to even graduate, stop and reflect about your past successes and build your confidence up just by reflecting on what you have done well and what you can do well. And believe in yourself that you do have what it takes. A good tool is to ask yourself, will this matter in five years, five months, or five days? If it's not going to matter in five days, that's something you can give wings to and tell it to go away. If it's going to matter in five months or five years, that's a pretty important issue. And if you're feeling uncertain about it, those are good things to talk to your professors or advisors about to kind of calm that stress down, um, to get some help. Another good tool is ask yourself, what is the worst thing that could possibly happen? That serves two purposes. First. If you think it through, and it's really not a big deal, that just shows you you're stressing out over something that's small in the first place. And second of all, if you think it through, it gives you a plan of action for if that bad thing does happen. So you're prepared. Time. Every college student knows about time and how little of it we seem to have. It's so important to plan ahead to think ahead and not to procrastinate. Procrastination causes stress upon stress upon stress to snowball. And that procrastination, we procrastinate sometimes because we feel overwhelmed. So a trick for that is to break big projects down into smaller projects. And sometimes it helps even just to set yourself a time limit of 15 minutes. 
Okay, I'm gonna, and literally set a timer. I'm gonna work on this thing for 15 minutes. Oftentimes what I've found is that within that 15 minutes of just taking action, I start to see that I am making progress and it loses a lot of that feeling of stress. And before you know it, you can start whittling that down and getting, getting things done. Discover the time of day that you have your peak energy. Some people are morning people, some are afternoon people, some of us are night owls. Figure out when your natural energy is the highest and then try when you can to dedicate that time to your most difficult tasks. Build in rewards as you reach your goals. We've got to live life and enjoy it along the way. We can't just work all the time when we get burnt out. Give yourself something to look forward to and celebrate your accomplishments along the way. Self-care. I don't know about you guys, but when I'm stressed, one of the first things that just goes out the window is taking care of myself. And we have to remember to eat well, to get plenty of sleep, to exercise, to make sure we're getting enough water, you know, all those things that our moms told us to do. Um, and it's very helpful to get a fresh perspective from a friend. If you're feeling stressed out, um, that's a great way to take care of yourself, is to turn to people that you trust and, and listen to what they have to say about your situation. Music is one of my favorites. Um, almost everybody is very uh, affected by music. Some mornings, if you get up and you're just dragging, you need music to get you going. That will lift you up. And sometimes, if you're already going too fast, <laughs> you need music to calm you down and soothe you. Um, so I use music a lot. I listen to music in my car on the way to school or between classes. I've seen a lot of students who listen to music between classes. It's a great way to just kind of get in whatever emotional space you want to be in. And lastly, learning to relax. Relax. I have to learn to relax. It's not natural for me. And so um, through just the course of time, we each have different things that we respond to. Um, so your idea of relaxing might be play basketball or reading a book. Whatever it is, just make it meaningful to you and then make time for that in your schedule and your life. If you learn to manage stress, you can not only survive in college, but you can thrive in college. I'm going to turn it over to Lee. Hello, thank you all for coming. My name is Lee Shorter, and I'm going to be talking about coming from, coming from a non-traditional student perspective of this. Uh, some of the stresses of being a non-traditional student, which by the way, I am one. I'm, I've told my age before, so I'm 37. may not look it, but thank you. Anyway, <laughs> some of the non-traditional stresses are jobs. We have family, friends, kids. Uh, social time, time for self, time for study and overall management. Uh, being a, a non-traditional student, it gets tough. I mean, I'm, I'm married, I have kids. So you really got to try to focus and make time for your studies, make time for your family, make time for your kids because if you're lacking in any one of those areas, it causes stress. And once again, the word stress, but it really does. I mean, there was some times when I first started school that I actually thought about quitting because it was hard to balance and to maintain a relationship with family, friends, or to have social time and to get your work done in time. So that's a key element is time management. Uh, some of the solutions that I've used in my experience of going to college is I've decided to keep a plan because it helps if you schedule events, if you write things down as they come to you, it helps because you can remember them. Do your studies at school. That works for me. Everybody may not be able to do that, but any free time that I have at school after class, I try to immediately go to the studies, go to my work, and try to do that so that I don't have to do it at home and take away from time with my family and my kids. Uh, during finals week, exact, you want to allow for extra time to study. You want to be prepared because you want to make good grades, obviously. Make your work schedule to fit your school schedule. You know, so if you, want, if you have a job, you need to look at the classes that you're going to be taking and look at the schedule that that job offers and try to apply for a job that is willing to work with your school schedule. That will help you out tremendous, tremendously if you can get your work schedule to fit your school schedule because that will save you a lot of stress and help with time management also. Most employees are very flexible, a lot around jobs, and they will work with a lot of Southern students. They do their best to 
So like I said, once again, it'd be a good idea to try to maintain your work and your school schedule. And when you're planning your next semester, start early, which Project Stay offers uh, priority enrollment, which is awesome because then you can come and determine what classes you'd like to take. You have time to look at those classes and the schedule wise, which can coincide with your work. So that's a good benefit of Project Stay because it gives you that time. These are very important things to do in order to be successful and maintain college and not really, like literally want to pull your hair out or quit because time, like I said, is a key element to surviving college and having time with your loved ones. Social solutions, best thing I would say that I find to do because like I said, it's a strain on the relationship. It really is if your kids, you're not able to spend time with them. Most good parents, you want to spend time, you want to interact with your kids as well as with your spouse or your significant other because if you don't, then the relationship can tend to suffer. So the best thing to do is involve your family in as much school activities as you can. We have like movie nights at school, they have different games and stuff like that. So if you can include the whole family, which helps you to spend more time with them. And like one of my issues when I first came as a non-trad student was how was I gonna relate to people who were in my class that were maybe younger than me. I didn't know how, you know, because there there's different trends and things as far as age group goes. So I didn't know how that I was going to relate or how they would relate to me. But I found actually that I have been able to learn a lot from uh, the younger students and they've also been able to learn from me. So it's always good to interact one with another because just because you're older doesn't mean you can't learn from somebody that's younger. And likewise, from a person that's younger, they can learn from someone that's older. We should all share our experiences and uh, help each other along. So it does help to just step out meet new people, like go on some of the trips that we take from Project Stay. We've had some awesome trips and you get to interact with people and learn a lot about them. Some people come from different cultures, different backgrounds, so you, all, you do get to learn a lot and it helps you, each, each one of you to transition through college. Uh, you can help the youth and sometimes they can help you out. Uh, like I said, attend as many events as you can and it helps you be more, insult, more social with other people. So. I believe that concludes mine. Thank you all for coming. I'm Missy, and I'll be talking about overcoming obstacles in college, because we know there's a lot of obstacles while we're attending college, and some of those are peer pressure and or homesickness for you know new new students coming straight out of high school. Money is always a, an issue. Relationships, sometimes transportation. And some of the obstacles that students face that are coming just out of high school are just peer pressure. You know, they, a lot of times you know, there's drug and alcohol, drugs, alcohol available, and friends will want you to party with them. And you're, you know, you, sometimes you're just like, well, what, what harm can it do? I'll just, you know, but first thing you know, you're getting to partying too much and you're waiting, you know, not spending as much time on your homework as you should. Uh, homesickness, a lot of uh, students that are coming straight out of high school, it's their first time away from home, they're living in a dorm. Um, so, you know, they have to deal with the homesickness, and that can be kind of tough. Uh, transportation, if you're living in a dorm, you know, getting, if you have to have a job, then getting to work from the dorms could be an issue. Um, uh, and some, you know, a lot of students coming straight from high school, they're being separated from their uh, girlfriend or boyfriend they have in high school, and it's the first time away from them. Um, another issue a lot of, it can be discrimination, whether it's sexual discrimination, racial discrimination. There's just all different kinds of discrimination that we sometimes have to deal with. And, uh, but, you know, if, if you run into, the, into any kind of discrimination, you can always go to a professor or an advisor and talk to them about what you're experiencing, you know, and they will help you solve the issue. And students with young families, as Lee was talking about, you know, they have obstacles to overcome. I, I know that my youngest son, he was, you know, attending college online, and he had a full-time job and a wife. So dealing with the children and a spouse while trying to do homework, sometimes the wife will get jealous because, well, you're gone all day at work, and then you come home and you're doing homework, and they feel like they're not getting enough of your time. Um, 
money, money gets tight when, even if you're working and going to school, sometimes money gets tight because you've got kids and you've got expenses, you know, and so money can be an issue for uh, people with families. Uh, and burnout, I know my son's last semester, he was, you know, really starting to feel the burnout. And uh, doing his homework was becoming an issue because he wanted to play games on the computer when he was supposed to be doing homework. And, you know, that would upset his wife too. She's like, I thought you're supposed to be doing homework and you're playing games. <laughs> so, but, um, and then there could be health issues. You know, you or one of your family members could be having health issues. And then that, you know, that's another source of an obstacle that you have to overcome, figuring out how you're going to take care of them while working, going to school. Um, but, you know, there again, just rely on your, you know, your, your social network that supports you, like family, friends, advisors, uh, you know, professors. Those are all good sources for you when, when you do have any kind of obstacle, whatever it may be, going to your support network, and they will reinforce, you know, what you help you believe in yourself and want you to help you finish your college education because they know it's important, you know. And so they're there for you and that's who the people you should lean on when you're feeling overwhelmed about, you know, stuff in your life. The students in their prime, of course, we, we have our own set of issues. <laughs> Sometimes we have health problems. Uh, Modern technology is a big one for me. I don't <laughs> operating a computer is, you know, sometimes well outside my realm. And I'm my son. That's what he majored in. So I'm always going to him. Hey, I can't get my printer to work. Hey, the computer's doing this or that. But you know, it, it is good to have someone there if you're facing these kind of issues also that you can you know turn to to help you with those kind of issues. Um, uh, then there's family issues. Uh, you know, sometimes. You have, you have family problems, you know. Uh, you can have a, a family member that's in a bad situation. Maybe there's some domestic abuse going on. And, you know, you're trying to cope with that while you're going to school. And like Southern here, if you're having those kind of problems, they have the ACT center where you can go for, you know, it's the testing and counseling center. You can go there and talk to a counselor if you're having, you know, difficulties. And, you, you know, you're thinking, well, I, I might want to drop out of college because, you know, the situation is going on and I just don't know how to handle it. They can help you kind of cope with that and maybe find a way around, you know, if dropping out of college. Sometimes you do have to drop. I dropped for a while. Uh, I was out for two years. But uh, thanks to the Project Stay Staff, uh, they supported me even when I was out of, you know, that two years I was out, I got lots of support for Project Stay. And I came back. I'm a junior now. I'll be a senior after this semester. So, I mean, there's lots of support there. Even if you do have to drop, you know, try to make it back if at all possible. Um, relationships can be really tough. You know, if you're single and going to school and you're older, uh, the dating scene is a lot different than when you're younger, so it's a lot harder. <laughs> um, but obstacles are all things that can be overcome if you want to overcome them. You know, you turn to your support groups and they will help you get through the tough times. And I'm turning it over to you. Oh, do I have one more? Okay, <laughs> sorry. My experiences, well, obviously family issues, many relationships. Oh, and I'm also living A, which takes a lot of my time because He's blind, can't see, so I'm his driver. I have to drive him, you know, wherever he needs to go. And, you know, if he needs help around the house because he can't see, sometimes I have to do yard work because obviously he can't pull on. <laughs> he would have no idea what he was doing. Uh, but, uh, so that takes up some of my time and it gets stressful, you know, but I, I talk to somebody when I'm feeling really stressed, I'll call and I'll vent to my sister or somebody, man, this is just taking up way too much of my time. I need to be studying and I'm having to do this. You know, but they encourage me. Uh, my sister graduated from Southern. I have a friend that graduated from Southern. So they're all a great support group for me. And now I'll turn it over to Lucas. <laughs> Hello, I'm Lucas Stanley. And I'm talking about you, how you need to have a good relationship with your professors. You need to make sure 
You need to make sure you go to class, introduce yourself to the professor, make sure you start off on a good tone, don't walk in the first day half asleep, complain about every other professor you've had so far. Try to meet them on a good tone, as you know you only get one first impression. If you don't do your homework, they tend to not like you very much. <laughs> or if you keep turning in late, that tends to give them a bad impression of you. And Professors do talk quite a bit. I developed a rapport with teachers I've never met before, just because teachers like to talk to each other. They'll complain or praise students. And that goes with the last point. If you talk bad about one professor in front of another one, the one you're talking bad about will probably hear about it. And while they may not, the professor you're talking bad about may not come up to you and say it, if you're hanging on about in between two grades, they may not bump you up when you would really want them to. Always try to be on time in your class. If you cut out early, try and tell them beforehand so they have good warning. Make sure you pay attention in your class. If you're using your computer to take notes, actually take notes. Don't be on your phone playing games or sexting other people. I said texting. I stutter something. But don't you either. <laughs> <laughs> don't be a little awkward in class. Don't do that either. It may be college, but don't do that. <laughs> Try and make sure you're prepared to class. If there's going to be a class discussion, you walk in not knowing what the reading was or the assignment you're supposed to do, turn up knowing nothing. Again, professor may not really respect you that much. Yeah. Make sure you keep talking to the professor, go visit them in their office if you're having any tr problems. They tend to like the students more who come and visit them in their office, whether you're just saying hi or actually asking for help. It tends to make them think of you more favorably. <coughs> Even if you're not taking them, stop and say hi if you're walking by because if you're trying to do anything after college, you might need a letter of recommendation. The professors are really good for that. That's about all I have to say. To and you. now I'm up. I'm Candace X. And, oh, and I'll be talking about qualities of a leader. And I will start off saying I never picture myself as a leader. I would rather <coughs> someone else lead the group and me follow along, but I have I like to see things get done, so I somehow jumped in the leadership role. Qualities of a good lead leader, a drive to execute. If you're not satisfied with the status quo, you want to improve things, which is kind of part of why I step into the leadership role. An ability to relate. You need to be able to relate to those you work with, and I think I do that pretty well. I usually try to find some kind of common ground with people and get to know them and just, you know, you have to relate with them so that you know what's going on and they feel like they can come and talk to you if they need to talk to you. Um, integrity. You need to be honest and trustworthy. If you say you're going to do something, do it. Yeah. Say what you mean and mean what you say. There's nothing worse than having a manager who will tell you something and not follow through with it and then they tell you something else, you're like, can I trust them? So, leadership. Taking on leadership roles will help you gain confidence, and it really has helped me gain a lot of confidence. I was a very uh, shy, pretty much. I didn't, I didn't really have any confidence at all. But the more I've taken on leadership roles and been su successful, the more confident I've become. And I really have no problem going up and talking to just anybody. I don't. My son is 19 years old, and he's like I used to be. I mean, how do you talk to people? You just go up and talk to them. You say, hey, you're sitting next to them in class, you find something in common, and you're just, just talk about them. So, leadership roles will help you develop communication skills. Again, you just, you know, you have to give presentations, so you have to learn how to communicate with people and get on other people's level. You'll gain responsibility, negotiation skills, and management skills. Well, that's really good if you want to be in a management position. 
So if, like I'm majoring in human resources, the leadership roles I'm taking on will help me in my future career. Leadership roles present you with opportunities for networking with business leaders in the community. I send some super leaders and they are able to meet business leaders in this community. And in the long run, that could help him in the future because he's already made the contacts with those managers out there in the community. And it looks good on your resume, of course. Opportunities to assist you, Project State Student Representative, and my note card. I was gonna say, if you wanna be a rep, you have to be a sophomore and been active for full semester with Project State and have a 3.0. UE course assistant or teaching assistant. There are several different teaching assistants around campus. I'm a UE course assistant. And the way I became that was I got an A in the class and my professor recommended me as a leader, emerging leader, which they had at that time. And then I applied in that position. Student Senate, aren't you on Student Senate? I believe yeah. Lucas is in Student Senate. You have fraternity and sorority, president and vice president, and clubs, presidents and vice presidents. Leadership courses, Project Stay offers the leadership and professional development course, and you have to be in Project Stay, a sophomore, and have a declared major. Super leaders, you apply for it, you write a one page essay, and tell them why that would benefit you and why you want to be a part of it. You have leadership workshops going on all the time. And you need leadership training. That goes along with the course assistant. Whenever you become a course assistant, they give you leadership training. And then our resources on campus to help you with all the things that we've talked about today. We have Project Stay, which we all know about, thank goodness. And the Axe Office, the Student Success Center, and the Career Center. If you ever have any questions about anything, you can go to any of these offices or we have our staff. So this concludes our presentation. Hope you all learned a lot. Thank you. Um, Candace and Stacey, are you guys both sent me um, little handouts? I didn't know if you guys wanted to, because we still have some time, if you guys wanted to talk a, a little bit about those, just what kind of way you felt like they would be beneficial. No, this is just. Yeah, I did. I them. Okay. Yeah. This one, I thought this was uh, really neat. It's called the Weekly Motivator, but it kind of touched on a lot of the things that um, that I talked about. And one thing I failed to mention was a stress journal. I had that on my slide. Um, if you catch yourself feeling stressed out all the time, that you're unaware, why am I feeling like this? It's just a great idea to start writing down what happened, how it made you feel, and then after a few days, look back over that and um, see if there's a pattern, see if there's a certain person you need to distance yourself from, or see if there's a, a pattern in the things that are stressing you, and then use those tools. What can I do about this, and what do I need to let go? Um, and this might be a way to kind of get you thinking along those lines. It, has two parts. The first part is an example of how to feel about somebody that had filled it out, just hypothetically. But it's a great way to kind of give you goals for exercise, um, planning fun, eating right, a specific goal for the week, um, what you're going to do to relax, and what you're going to do to seek out support from others. So this is a, um, a great way to put on paper some of those tools that we talked about for setting yourself up for success. Um, and if you like it, just make us several copies somehow um, and do one every week. <laughs> and then mine, I've taken this before, and I believe I even took it in my psychology class, but it's just a stress inventory. And you can go through there and you circle all these that pertain to you. And then at the bottom, you'll add all those up. And then you can see what your stress level is. And they use these, if you ever go to a psychologist or psychiatrist, they will have you take one of these and then they'll be able to assess, okay, how stressed is this person, what areas do we need to work on? So if you want to do that, you can do that. You can see how stressed you are. Hmm. <laughs> like, yeah, no. 
I'm not in jail. I do have a question. It's more for kind of everyone that's here. Is that I mean, we seem like we've talked a lot about stress and the various ways that we get stressed out. And I know, uh, you know, for some of you, this is your first semester starting, uh, or maybe a you know sophomore standing, but. What are some of the stresses that you encountered so far during your first set, you know, semester or so, and what have you been trying to do to uh, you know, address that issue? So. Probably parties and stuff, just trying to stay away from that and focus on school, saying no. And, I mean, it's okay to go occasionally, but I just try to focus more on school instead of partying. That's, that's been a real struggle for me. So have you kind of been finding that there are some students are more interested in doing the party and seeing rather than the studies and you know you're trying just to get away from that as much as you can? Yes, most definitely. Okay. Other examples? Working and going to college is a lot harder than working and going to high school. And what have you had to do to try to balance it? I work a lot less. Okay. And so, I mean, did you find a, a certain number that works better? I mean, everyone's different. Sometimes it's 25 hours a week, then school, or sometimes it's less than that. I mean, what's... I work about 15. Okay, so 15 is kind of your comfort zone now? Yeah. I work Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Okay. So you know that you probably can't do a lot of studying on the weekend, so you got to do yeah. more of your studying during the weekday. Okay. Other examples? Yeah, we can go in any order we want. Well, when I first, my first semester here, uh, of this was three years ago now, um, but it was, for me, it was being in a place where I didn't know anybody. I, didn't, I was new to the state, I was new to the college, I didn't know anyone. Um, so over time, you will develop those friendships and will develop, you'll be like little families in your classes, especially if, if you're taking a course that a lot of other people are, as far as your major you'll end up kind of being like a little family because you'll end up seeing them throughout your college career more and more. Um, but you, but as for now, it's for me, it's work, I work 40 hours a week at a call center. So I deal with angry people, then I come here and I do, you know, I deal with lectures and lots of writing assignments and stuff like that. So it never really ends for me. I guess the balance is Kind of, I have a wife at home that likes to help me split my homework. But she doesn't have anything to do all day, so she'll help me do it. So I kind of have a partner in that. Um, so I guess we can kind of split the responsibilities, so to speak. But, um, but like I'm, I'm even talking about going down to part time now or taking part time school because I just recently got married and balancing family life with school um, is becoming tough. So I've got to cut down on some of that. Yeah, so you've got to find the area where you know you can have that balance yeah. again. <laughs> so like 15 hours is you know for you that works best for your balance you know with work. Yours may be reducing the other side of that whether whether it's academics so you can have the right balance. Okay. Um, mine is I, we have a large family so and a lot of our kids are active doing stuff and then I'm doing a lot of clip, uh, you know, clinicals right now, so it's just finding the time to fit everything in. Um, I actually, I don't have a planner, but I have one of those big calendars, and we write every event down that's that's going to be taking place, even if it's me or if it's the kids. Uh, that way, uh, you know, hopefully nothing slips out of our fingers, and we're able to take care of everything. It's interesting some days. <laughs> we make it work. Well, I wouldn't mind having the party problem, actually. <laughs> Kids, you know, my wife and what have you, but uh, I would say probably planning out my four years, make sure that I don't double down on one class like I took in my freshman year, sophomore year. That's pretty much it, just trying to plan out my, my four years appropriately. And has that been a bit of a struggle? I mean, for me, it's been stressful because I'm like, hey, I'll major in this, but no, nah, no, nah, I'm going to major in this. But if I do this, I got to do that. So it's kind of been a frustrating thing to figure out. Don't mess around in this class because I mean I need it next year. So it's been a stress for me. And I will say, you know, a lot of students tend to struggle with that. You know, what am I going to do? Because I mean, it seems so permanent. And you know, there's so many different things that you can do out there. Whether it's simply just doing research, looking at various fields, even though that can cause problems because then you get interested in a ton of different fields. 
that's right. You know, you can see yourself doing just about anything. But I would always uh, ask yourself, you know, can you see yourself doing that 15 or 20 years from now? If you can't see yourself doing that 15 or 20 years from now, that's probably your answer, you know, uh, you know for long-term wise. Uh, and so, but I think, you know, it's normal <laughs> you know, to be stressed out. I can tell you, when I started college, uh, I, I just majored in general studies because I didn't know what I wanted to do. I wasn't even sure if I was going to pass, you know, because, uh, you know, I'm so, uh, you know, Paranoid that I, you know, that I was going to fail all my classes. So I just took my basics. You know, I got my associate's degree. It was my last semester when I actually finally decided on the major. But by at that stage, I had taken so many hours. Right. I felt what I was good at, and what I was bad at. I knew early on that science and math was not my strong, you know, suit. I mean, I did okay in the classes, but I just didn't like them. And I had to work twice as hard in those classes. Um, and I liked writing, so I knew whatever I did. I would probably lean towards something in that area, academic-wise. And so you'll find your strengths, your weaknesses, and chances are that there's a, a likelihood that you'll be good at a lot of different areas. So really, then it becomes, what am I passionate about? You know, what, where can you see yourself 15 or 20 years from now? And there's going to be a lot of stress along the way trying to figure that out. And so I think what uh, all the representatives mentioned today, I think it's good. And the resources. There's so many resources on campus, you know, and you just have to take advantage of those, you know, while you're here. And so, be surprised at how many students uh, either don't know about those resources, who are just or too uh, intimidated to go and ask, you know, for help. So, uh, hopefully, we'll take that, you know, from here. Is you know, know the resources, go out there, ask questions. So, one thing I would say also is when you're when you're selecting a major, if you're unsure. Um, kind of research what's out there, what the demand is, um, because, I mean, obviously do what you like to do, you know, what you have a passion for, but also kind of research what, where the demands are for jobs. You know, there's a lot of medical, there's a lot of law, there's a lot of uh, real estate, there's a lot of, there's so many different places, things available, and depending on what you want to do, you can probably incorporate some kind of something into that along with, you know, your dream or your passion or what you want to do probably go out in the workforce and, and that's the good thing about the shadowing is if you're not sure you can still go out there and shadow different places through Project Stay and kind of get an idea of what you want to do and kind of talk to the employers and ask them what's the turnaround rate on this job, you know, because they'll probably be up front with you on it. 